Now, here we see the beautiful audit process. It's a life cycle of an audit all the way from a beautiful caterpillar to a butterfly sailing off in the wind. Now, here are just general principles for in engagement. Now, this is, as mentioned before, kind of tying in with other engagement types. We've got the audit, but also just general engagement types. Overall, you're going to have your objectives. Well, what are your objectives? Is it to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence to provide reasonable assurance that there is no material misstatements? Is it to give a review? Is it to prepare the financial statements? What is it? That's what you're going to determine here. Documentation, communication, making sure that your quality control, these all have their own sections, their own lessons, which obviously will go to more depth there. Now, our first step in any engagement is acceptance. First, whether it's acceptance or continuance, because it could be our first year possibly accepting the engagement, or maybe it's our second year because we already accepted it last year. But every year when you're dealing with an engagement, you have to reassess, can we do this engagement? Now, some reasons you may not be able to proceed with the engagement, even if you did it last year, is maybe now you're not independent because uh, let's say your sibling works as the CEO, just got hired as the CEO, CEO of the audit client. Now that's going to breach independence, something there, but obviously try to find a workaround, get your independence back. Also, the terms of the engagement, if these are not agreed upon, just like if you're hiring someone to do renovations to your house, if the terms of the engagement, the terms of the contract, are not agreed upon, then that's a reason why the engagement might not even take off the ground to begin with. Next step, let's say everything's all good to go. We accept the engagement. All parties are in agreement with what needs to be done, that we need access to certain information, and we need to be able to talk to individuals within the entity. Then we move on to the assess risk and plan response phase. Now, this is really just yeah, assessing risk and planning. I'll call it the planning stage. This is going to be audit planning, including the audit strategy. We're going to talk in this lesson when we get to audit planning about the actual meetings you have, what you need to consider. We also talk about materiality, which a big topic there, it has its own lesson as well. We're gonna determine materiality and also possible materiality could change throughout the audit and that's fine, we'll talk about that there. Risk assessment procedures, we wanna understand the entity and its environment, understand the internal control, get a good understanding of the possible risks to this particular type of entity, because guess what? Every company is different, every entity is different, whether it's a non-for-profit organization, governmental entity, anything like that. We want to identify and assess the risk here, and then we want to respond to that risk in an appropriate manner. Now we have moved on from planning. We're actually getting to work, really just summarizing it up, tests of controls and substantive testing. This is going to be where you test if the internal controls are operating properly. This is where you're confirming the numbers on the financial statements. That's all I'm going to say there because, so oh boy, do we have a lot of lessons on that in the future. Lastly, we get to forming conclusions and then the end deliverable, the report. For the forming conclusions, we want to go over any subsequent events, making sure that we account for those. We want to get management representation. Management has to give us a management representation letter saying that they are responsible for the fair presentation of the financial statements as well as their internal controls. And there's a whole lot of uh, liabilities that we're going to dissuade and make sure that management takes responsibility for. We want to evaluate the results so that we can you know, form our conclusion, get our opinion. And quality control throughout the engagement that we're going to see, this is just making sure that, hey, we did a whole engagement. Did we do it properly? We're going to have someone assess this before we can report on anything. We're going to want a quality control review partner or person to come in and make sure our audit was done properly before we give our end deliverable, our thoughts on the matter. And if we didn't, well, we may have to go back and test more. We may have to go back and reassess, redo some of these other parts of the audit. Lastly, for reporting, we want to report on audited financial statements or any other reporting considerations. This is obviously, again, a whole lesson on what's the end deliverable? Are we giving a report? Are we giving a list of procedures, a list of findings? Are we giving some sort of document, some report, some package of financial statements that can vary quite widely depending on the type of engagement? And here's a little bit more of an in-depth analysis on those particular stages in the audit. We are gonna see that we've got, well, we've got our audit stage here. Then we've got what actions are we taking here? And then we've just got some items that you're gonna document during that particular stage. This is just like many items, many charts, many graphics. This is not all inclusive. There are many other items that will be done, but these are, I'd say specifically things to memorize and a good foundation for what we're gonna see. We'll dive into much more detail as we get to each particular lesson. First off, when we get to engagement acceptance, first, can we do this engagement properly? Is management possibly unethical? Because if management is unethical, maybe we don't wanna get into the engagement to begin with. We as auditors, what's our biggest asset? It's our reputation. And if we engage with a management with a company that is unethical, that might tarnish our reputation. 
in which case we might go out of business because no one wants to hire us as an auditor anymore. That's something to consider as well as independence. In order to conduct an audit, we need to be independent in body and mind, in actual reality, and in a presentation. That's something we'll talk about as well. We want to make sure that there's no reason we wouldn't be able to give an unbiased opinion. Next, for the terms of engagement, we want to make sure that everything's agreed upon. We let the management know this is what we're going to do. We're going to have to poke and prod. We're going to have to get financial information from you, reports. We're going to have to talk to your employees. We want to make sure that we have access to talk to the predecessor auditor. Because if we are auditing for the first year, guess what? Last year, there likely could have been someone auditing the company. And as such, we'll talk about this with the terms of the engagement. You need to get access and affirmation from management that you are able to talk to their prior year auditor. And a lot of reasons why. We'll talk about that more. We want to make sure that there's no issues that, hey, why did you change auditors? Is it for a suspicious reason? That's something we want to consider here as well. Once the engagement has been accepted, we want to start planning the engagement. We want to understand the client, making sure that we understand the particular risks that are going to be within this one client. We want to gain knowledge about the industry. Are they in manufacturing? Are they in tech? Are they in uh, restaurant, food services, financial services? What are we going to do? We must obtain once engagement is accepted. That's what we want to make sure we do. As soon as we get in there, we want to understand the industry or knowledge about the specific business. We want to tour their facilities, review their financial history. We want to inquire of any of their employees, kind of get an idea. If we don't know what someone does, who are you? What do you do? Let's get an understanding and idea there. We also want to document this, any relevant industry, regulatory, and other external factors, the nature of the entity. We want to document what they do, understanding overall what you're looking for. For example, software companies, guess what? They're not really going to have a lot of inventory, whereas manufacturing companies are going to have a lot of inventory there. Very big distinction, and that's going to dictate what you're going to do and what you're going to focus on when you get into your engagement. Each engagement type has different accounts that will be more important. Each type of entity also has different transactions that can be more prevalent. You want to understand what you need to look out for. If you're getting into a high complex derivatives trading firm, a private equity firm, hedge fund, anything like that, obviously, you know you're going to have a lot of complexity when it comes to the types of securities. You may have more valuation issues than you may have in a manufacturing company. We want to develop our audit strategy when we're planning the engagement as well. We want to get a preliminary assessment of materiality. Materiality meaning what's important, what do we need to assess more. We can change materiality as we go throughout the audit. We'll talk about that in our materiality lesson. We want to outline the scope, what we're doing, what we're responsible for in this engagement. What are our objectives, the timing of that, just like in any sort of service-based engagement, whether it's someone building your house or you cleaning someone's property or you mowing their lawn. You want to make sure that the timing is coming across properly and we understand when it's going to get done. Because guess what? If you don't plan that out, it may just never get done. Any required communications, there are legally required communications and AICPA says this needs to be communicated to management or those charged with governance. Any factors that determine specific focus on this item. Who are we going to talk to? We're going to talk to the, uh, the staff auditors. We want to make sure that we have enough people to actually do the audit. If we don't have enough people to actually conduct the audit, well, that's a problem. I mean, we should consider that as well. Consider the work of the internal auditors. So a company hires internal auditors. So if we're auditing Microsoft, Microsoft hires a whole department of internal auditors. Their job full year is to make sure that Microsoft is being ethical, that their internal controls are working properly. We want to make sure that we consider as external auditors the work of the internal auditors. Talk to them, make sure that we are you know, able to work together and use their work. If they have any issues, they might report them to us. We want to consider the use of a specialist, someone we may bring in because, well, we can accept an engagement if we're not the, particularly the best or most knowledgeable in that industry, but we may need to work with a specialist. If we are getting into a super blockchain specific field where it's cutting edge technology, we may need to hire someone who's a specialist in that field. Lastly, materiality calculation. This is where we're going to make sure that when it comes to materiality, we have a solid calculation for that. We have a real reason for using so. When we get to our audit plan, so strategy is just our overall strategy. Now, this is the specific plan. We want a written plan outlining the nature, extent, and timing. These three factors are important, the nature, extent, and timing. We're going to see that a few times throughout the course of the audit procedures. Which procedures are we doing? How much are we doing them? And when are we doing them? Here in our planning stage, we want to assess risk. We may want to do tests of controls, substantive procedures, and any other audit procedures. We want to document the understanding of the entity's control activities, any assessment of the risk of material misstatement at the financial statement and assertion level. That's going to be something there to take note of. And then when we actually execute the audit, 
We're going to perform procedures and obtain evidence. We're going to do this through testing controls, through some substantive testing. Now, for tests of controls, we'll dive into that later in another lesson. We're going to just test the design, implementation, and maintenance or operating effectiveness to rely on the control. We want to make sure that, okay, if we talk about the cash reconciliation for a company, can we rely upon that? You know, or if the check, if the uh, process is that, okay, the company's supposed to, someone receives the cash, then they pass it on to someone else, and then it gets put in a safety deposit box. Can we rely upon that? Is that actually what's happening? Because if that's the case, we will have more reliance upon the actual correct number of the cash account. For substantive testing, this is verifying the numbers, the actual numbers in the financial statements. Here, you may have interim testing. We'll talk about that. That's basically testing in halfway throughout the year to kind of get an idea of what's going on. We'll talk about that when we get through a few lessons. We'll talk about that. Now, conclusions, assessing subsequent events, whole lesson on that. Any representations from management, evaluate those audit results. Make sure you did a quality audit. And then lastly, for reporting, we want to communicate with those charged with governance. This is going to be where we give our end deliverable. Is it not opinion? Is it a report? Is it a list of findings? That just depends on the engagement. Hey there. Are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material. We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.